Hi, welcome everybody to postcard number 63. 63. And we're here at the Heritage Park today. Yep, we're down Main Street all Ness, just at the top end towards Invergordon. If you go there, you'll find the Heritage Centre and we are in the Heritage Park today. Hi, Billy. Today we're starting with Shona's artwork. I think she's doing it for TAG. Right. Shona, let's, it's good to have you in the postcard, Shona. It's nice to see you and let's see your artwork. Well, it was nice to see you, Shona. And the uh, artwork was super. Now we're moving on to Kay, who recently had a birthday, and we've got photos of her birthday tea. So look at this, Billy. Mm, that will be nice. That looks really lovely and Kate, we hope that you had a very happy birthday. Now you may remember a little while ago that we were asking for people to paint stones. Now this is Amanda's project at the centre. She's trying to get stones decorated by people that either go to the Isabel Rhine Centre or have been going to the Isabel Rhine Centre and to put them out at the centre as a lovely display. Now, it's really good to know that people have been doing that. We've had a few mm -hmm. photographs yeah. of stones, yeah. do you know me? We have. We have. Now, here's a new one for us, and this is Kerry's stone. Well, that was lovely, Kerry, and anybody else that's watching, if you feel that you'd love to do a stone, there's time to do it. Get the paints out, uh, get the paintbrush out, and get a nice stone and get it painted up for the centre. We'd love to see a wonderful display at the centre of people's stones. Mm -hmm. uh, somebody had asked recently on the Zoom session what paints we recommend for doing the stones mm -hmm. and acrylics with the best option it seemed to be the recommendation was acrylic paints and once you do that you can varnish it and mm -hmm. that it'll, makes be all, it it'll be all set to go outside yeah but i'm sure if you can't varnish it i'm sure that someone at the center will do it for you but remember to keep sending them in so yeah. it'll be a great display to have yeah now, moving on to Peter, who's been busy colouring again, and his colourings are that neat. So let's have a look at them. We've called it Peter's Kaleidoscope.
Peter, you're a dab hand at that colour, and I know there's lots of other people at the centre that like colour too, so if you think you want to see yours on the postcards, send in your photographs. Now, it's time for today's activity. Over to the kitchen. Well, hi everybody, and welcome back to Billy's Kitchen. It's a long while since you've been in Billy's Kitchen. Probably the last time we would have called it summer and now you would say it was the autumn. So today I'm going to do something out of this book of the seasons. Now you think, what could I be making to do with the autumn? Well, I'm planning to make this chocolate cobweb cake. Now that's how it looks in the book. Yeah. And we'll be able to compare afterwards to see how it looks in reality. Now, we'll go over some of the things we've got we need. Here's the equipment we need. We need a bowl, a wooden spoon and a spatula. A baking tin which has been greased and lined with greaseproof paper. A mug for the egg, a fork and some scales. Okay, that's the equipment. Now, what we need for ingredients. Eggs, margarine, Sugar, which is castor sugar. Flour, plain flour with baking powder. Now you could make it with self-raising flour, but we are going with plain flour and baking powder. Cocoa for the chocolate and ground rice. That is our ingredients. Okay, we're going to begin with the cocoa powder. First though, put on your oven to heat up. Now we're putting on the oven at... What are we putting it on at, Jane? 180, I've already turned the oven on. Really. 180 yeah. degrees. Now we're putting four tablespoons of cocoa powder in a separate bowl. And we're going to make it into a paste. So, four tablespoons. That's not two. a tablespoon. It says two. Well, Jane's corrected me. We're doing two tablespoons of cocoa. Rounded, it says. That's kind of heat. You know I like things chocolatey. So there's two. Now it says we're also going to have to slowly mix in four tablespoons of hot water to make a paste. Oh, one. Try not to spill it all over the table like I've just done. That's about four. Now you have to mix it up till you make a paste and I'll tell you that's a paste and I can smell the chocolateness off it. Maybe chocolatiness is a better name, chocolatiness. It's a bit like cement, Billy. Now look at that for chocolatiness. I hope that's come out the bowl. Chocolateness. Okay, next step. Put all the other cake ingredients in a mixing bowl. Now this is the mixing bowl. We have to put all the ingredients in here. Now, first, ingredients, uh, first ingredient is the flour. Now we've got to put the flour into the mixture. Now how much flour is it? I'll have a look at my instructions here. It says six ounces. Now, I think that's about six ounces. Six ounces of flour in the bowl. Now, for every ounce you need to put in, Jane, how much uh, baking powder? For six ounces, Billy, you need two teaspoonfuls of baking powder. Right, two teaspoonfuls of baking powder is going in with... And in this recipe it says to add another... With the flour. Another, Billy. Baking powder. Another one? Yes. Okay. Now, okay. it's always good to listen to somebody that knows a bit better than yourself. So don't be afraid to take instruction. Right, now that's, and now we've got to put in the castor sugar, which is eight ounces of castor sugar. We've got the scales already up here. So we're putting eight ounces of castor sugar. There we go, that was quite easily done. Eight ounces straight into the bowl. 
What's next, do you think? We've got to do margarine. Eight ounces of soft margarine. Eight ounces, bang on. Right, put that in. What else is next? Eight ounces of four eggs. Now, we're just going to crack the eggs. Well, tell you what, we'll crack them into a cup first. Yes, just to see that they're all right and then we can mix them up. If you do them one at a time, you can tell if all the eggs are fresh. As though they're all fresh, though, they're being from the supermarket no, indeed. Right. It's always as well to crack one egg at a time in a cup. Okay, now here's what we'll try. I quite like cracking the eggs. Here we go. There's number one. No shell in it. No, I'm wondering where to put it. I think I'll put it in the old you, margarine. Are you not tub. going to do one at a time, Billy? No. I'm putting them all in. Two, three, oops, and four. Got my fork here, and I'm going to mix them up. Thank you very much. This one came from Mallorca. I don't know who gave us it, but it's a very nice apron. Well, maybe I do know. Maybe it was my mum, but if I did know, I'd forgotten. Or maybe I hadn't forgotten. Right, put this in. Okay, now I'm dripping eggs all over the place. Now, have I any more things to put in? Yes, I have two ounces of ground rice. Now, excuse me a wee minute, I'm going to just give my hands a wee wash because I've got egg on them. Okay, now we're going to put the two ounce of ground rice in. Oh, I'm knocking everything all over the place. Like I'm doing a china chop Now, I can see this going all over the place when I open it. So. Oh. Would that be wise? Be right, I'll use a pair of scissors. I can't see the pair of scissors. Right, I'm going to use scissors because I, you could envisage ground rice going all over the place if I tried to do that with my hands. Now, I'm putting in two ounces. Now... I think that's about two ounces. I better put this back in the box so that it doesn't spill all over the place. There we go, I'm making a bit of a mess of the table, but... Never mind, it should be worth it if this cake tastes good. Now, that's us measured everything that we need. We've got, here we've got the mixture. You can look at that mixture. This is like the Bake Off, isn't it? It says now, put your chocolate paste. Now, my chocolate paste is looking gay chocolatey. I wonder if I needed a wee bit more hot water in that. I think you need the overdo chocolate bit, Billy. No, I don't think you can overdo chocolate. Well, you probably can. I'd better say that just in case anybody overdoses in too much chocolate. But uh, we've got a lot of chocolate here. Chocolate paste. We're just watching the Bake Off on TV. Yeah, we're very good. You want the Bake Off, Billy? Well, to... Tonight, we just watched it and it was Lottie that was the star baker. Now, I don't know if you've got a favourite on the Bake Off, we'll see who wins. There's the Scottish boy from... Uh, Peter, he's my He's favorite. from Edinburgh and he's doing pretty well. Now, yeah. you have to mix all this stuff together. I'll turn off now and we'll come back once you finish mixing. Okay, I'll keep on mixing and you go and have a cup of tea or make yourself a piece of toast. Yeah, I can see what creaming means because as you mix it, you can see that the butter is mixing in, creaming together, and the chocolate is beginning to mix in with it all too. I think the hot water helps to melt the margarine. 
as you can see the margarine is disappearing into the mixture but you can still see the little bits we want to get rid of that and we want to see the chocolate all mixed well in as well okay everything's mixed in so here's the mixture and it's going into the baking tin now i'm going to have to be careful here that i pour it in the tin and don't get it anywhere else we want to get, all, get it all in. Mm -hmm. That's why you've got your spatula. Scrape it in. And there we go. Okay, I'm putting the cake in the oven now. I'm putting it in probably for between 35 and 40 minutes. Okay folks, now to see if the first part of the procedure has went according to plan. Let's have a look at the cake. There is the cake. It looks it quite good. I'm going to test it with the skewer, just as Jane has told me to do. Here's the skewer. It's got to come out clean. It has come out clean. Now we get it out of the tin. Now, I better do what I'm told. Right. I'm tipping it upside down in the tray. Okay, here we go. You ready? Yeah. Okay. Oh ho! There is the first part of the procedure. So we'll have a look and see. It's like the lid. It's looking good. Right, we'll light it when it goes cold. Okay, we have to leave it till it cools off now because if you put the icing on it, it would all melt. Now we're going to try to cut the cake in half, but not this way, that way. Okay, trying to get it halfway. Oh, right. Lift it straight across and then you'll move to the straight across to get it back in. There we go. That's my cake. Now we're coming to a very uh, tricky part of the procedure. I mean, you're going to be using some boiling water, so be very careful when you're using boiling water. And it's really better if you do this with supervision. But we're going to put some boiling water in a pot here quite a lot of the, I'd already put some in beforehand and then we're going to put a bowl on top of the boiling water now we're going to put into the bowl the, the chocolate now it's 225 grams of plain chocolate now that's quite a lot of plain chocolate but let's get it in Yeah, you've got to be very careful when you're dealing with chocolate. I mean, I mean with hot water. <laughs> Chocolate's not actually dangerous. Unless you eat too much. It's dangerous to dogs. Yeah, well, that's dangerous to dogs. Now, that's all the... Chocolate just about in the bowl. Now we need some butter. margarine and I don't have the butter out. Now into the chocolate we're going to put four ounces of butter. Now it says cut it up into small pieces. So that's what I'm going to try to do. There's the first bit on the floor. So I'm... Oh. <laughs> There's the second bit on the floor. So I'm going to have to stop now and make sure I can get four ounces somewhere else. Now I've decided that because of the butter flying all over the kitchen, instead of cutting it up into pieces, I'm just going to put it in as is. So there's the, there's the butter going in. And I'm going to need a bit extra because of the stuff that I spilled on the, 
on the floor. I think there's probably a bit too extra. Is it? Perfect. That's the equivalent of what I've spilt on the floor. Now we melt it all together. Right, you come back once I've finished this melting process. Now we're getting to the fun part. We can put the chocolate on the cake. Here's my chocolate, look at that. It's like something off the Bake Off. Now we're going to put some in the middle of the cake. This is it, transferring it with the spoon belly. Now they say to use about half of the chocolate mixture on this bit. I'm wondering if that's enough, Jane, do you think so? No? I think you can be quite generous, you've got quite a lot of chocolate there, Billy. I think you're not getting more chocolate in there, Billy. Right, now I'm going to fold over. Now this is difficult. Do it gently so it doesn't splatter all over the place. It's going over. And it's going on. Now we put the rest of the chocolate my cameraman seems determined not to film me. We're going to put the rest of the chocolate on the cake. I'm not getting too close, Billy. I'll stand back and get you all in. Now you can just take your time or you can belt it all on as quick as you want. But I'm quite enjoying taking my time. Oh, now I'm nearly finished in the got chocolate. You've chocolate on your nose, Billy. Mm. Well, I've missed one little bit here that hasn't got chocolate on it. I'm amazed you missed anything with all that chocolate filling. Okay, now we're going to melt, melt the white chocolate and we are melting 100 grams of white chocolate. No, it's just chocolate we're melting this time. There's a bit on the floor, but don't worry about that. We're just going to hope that we've got enough. Now we're going to put the white chocolate, the melted white chocolate, into a plastic bag. Now be very careful here. Put it right down in the corner of the plastic bag. That's going to be like a piping bag, Billy. That's exactly what it's going to be like. Now we scrunch up the bag and it says that they want us to cut the corner off the end. Now this is going to be a bit tricky. Oh no! Here we go, I'm going to make a circle. Right, I'm going to make another circle inside. And I'm going to make another circle inside that. There we go. We'll try. There we go. Now what you have to do is drag the circles into the cobweb shape. we have the chocolate cobweb cake. Now with Halloween not far away, William's been busy preparing his pumpkin. So let's have a look at it. Great pumpkin, Willie. Yeah, it's good them's keeping busy. I wonder if that's like a pumpkin lantern he was making. 
and I wonder what he's done with the flesh of the pumpkin. He might have made it into soup or maybe he's made it into a pumpkin pie. What do you think, Billy? Pumpkin porridge? Well, who knows? Pumpkin puree. Now we're going to move on to Karen, who's been busy. She's been drawn round her hand as well. I wonder if she's making something for Tag. Well, let's see, Karen. Well, Karen, it was really good to see you there on the postcard again. Now, I hope you've enjoyed the postcard today. Time for Sing Along. Now, we want you all joining in with us. Now, I hope you're all well. Bye. Bye. Wonder if one day that you say that you care If you say you love me madly, I'll gladly be there Like a puppet on a string Love is just like a merry-go-round With all the fun of a fair One day I'm feeling down in the ground then I'm up in the air Are you leading me on now? Tomorrow will you be gone now? I wonder if one day that you'll say that you care If you say you love me madly I'll gladly be there Like a puppet on a string Swings. In or out, there is never a doubt Just who's pulling the strings I'm all tied up to you But where's it leading me to? I wonder if one day that you'll say that you can Say you love me madly, I'll gladly be there Like a puppet on a string Like a puppet on a string